Hi, I'm Karen Rice and welcome to my acrylic YouTube channel. I'm going to demonstrate a step-by-step -step tutorial of some beautiful lilacs using quite a limited palette and some fun techniques, spattering and using a scouring sponge to actually create texture and some lovely stippling techniques as well. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my acrylic painting channel and you will get updates of my latest tutorials. So, shall we get started? For a full list of all the materials I'm using in this tutorial and a link for the photograph, please see the description below. Just click show more. I've actually painted mixing a little bit of pink and blue for the background. I've let that dry. And as you can see now, I'm using a small round brush, using a bit of white titanium and actually divided the painting up into four. And now the sort of bottom half or the middle down to the bottom in the foreground there, I'm actually sketching in the vase. So it's a good idea to sort of work out your proportions here. So the top part of the vase is wider and the bottom part of the vase is narrow and I've just sort of curved it into the centre. But it's quite nice to have that line going down the middle as well. I'm just sort of sketching in some leaves here using a bit of blue and yellow and just sketching around the sort of the shape of the flowers as well um, using a bit of pink and white. So I'm actually painting in the background now using a little bit of cobalt blue with a touch of a little bit of yellow oxide, but you could use a yellow ochre with some white. I'm using a flat one inch brush and just painting in this pale background. So interesting enough, I'm not painting the flowers or the vase. I want to sort of block in that background, push it back. It's quite pale and keep it quite neutral as well. I actually quite like this color. I started doing it on the left hand side. So I've decided to add a little bit of violet, the yellow oxide and white. It's a little bit more softer and it goes well with the lilac. So that was a bit of happy accident. And so I'm just blocking that in and sort of sort of cutting into the shape of the flowers as well. I'm also using that color to paint some light in the vase also. I've mixed up a little bit of the oxide yellow with some red and a touch of white and I'm painting in sort of quite loosely some of the color of the actual wooden sort of surface, the floor, I assume. Um, so it's a quite a nice bright sort of color and I'm actually mixed up a little bit more of the brown oxide, but you could use burnt sienna or burnt umber and just sort of mix that into the color. Now the paint's still wet and I'm using my palette knife. You can use a plastic card to do this and scratching out some of the wet paint to reveal some of the dark color below, which is really effective. It gives that look of wood and it is so much fun to do. I'm just using a little bit of that sort of warm colour just to create a little bit of the detail in the background there also and blending in with my fingertips and pushing that through the vase as well to create harmony. I'm using the scourer now to, I've wet the scourer as well, rinsed out all the water and I'm just using some pink and white, any pink will do, and printing on um, the lilacs here and it just creates so much texture and you'll find that lovely dark background create as acts as your dark as well so I'm just going to continue on here printing with the pink and the white and then I'll mix up some blue and pink and white and then white as well with a touch of the oxide yellow or yellow ochre to create the texture of these lilacs I hope you can see the painting building now. You know, I'm working for that sort of really large detail and that's sort of homing in on this sort of middle stage, painting in the leaves here, using a little bit of blue and yellow, mostly blue, so it's a nice dark green. So sort of just using my flat one inch brush to sort of really sort of create the shapes, just using the brush to press and lift to create the leaf shape here, sort of twisting my wrist as well as I go. I've mixed up a little bit more of some yellow in here now to create sort of more of a light 
lighter mid green still sort of the um, painting is still wet so I'm trying to be careful here I've actually added by a little bit of red by accident there but it's quite a nice color actually I'm painting this into the vase here I'm actually painting some of the stems in here using a bit of yellow red and white even a little bit of the oxide color there you can use burnt sienna just to create some of the stems for some details I thought it'd be quite nice to put a little bit of the pink in the vase here as well and just smudge with my fingertips to create a little bit of colour harmony and some light in the vase. The painting has dried and I'm just building up now using some of the cobalt blue, you could use ultramarine and white to create some light areas on the lilacs here but I'm also stippling with my brush to create detail here. You may prefer to do that rather than use the scourer, um, it's quite good fun to do so I'm just building up up sort of light mid-tone and some dark tones as well mixing up a little bit of Prussian blue and red to create some of the dark shadows on the blue lilacs. I'm working on the white lilacs now using the scourer still creating a little bit more texture almost white on its own to get a little bit of sparkle here and light on those lilacs there. I'm using a bit of yellow and a touch of teal or you could use the Prussian blue or a cold blue here and just painting a very light yellow green color for the some of the sort of green that you can see coming through especially those white flowers there. I'm now working on the pink lilacs using the scourer first but then I'm going to move on to a stippling technique as well building up light mid-tone and dark pinks. I also added a little bit of violet to make that pink a little bit darker. I'm now painting on some limey light greens using the yellow and the teal wet on dry here using my round brush. Now I've swapped to my round brush to get a little bit more detail. A good tip to get a straight edge is to use the washi tape or masking tape. Make sure your painting is dry when you stick it on. And I've just put it there and I'm painting up to it. So when I peel it off, I'll get a nice straight edge. And I'll do that at the bottom part as well. I've used a little violet and brown to paint the dark here and smudged a little bit with my fingertips. This is the fun bit and the best bit. I always, I've done all the hard work and I'm gonna paint the highlights onto the vase wet on dry using a small round brush with some white paint and just picking out the light, you know, here and there, that little bit of sparkle and light catching the vase, bringing it to life, making it look transparent. I'm 
I allowed my painting to dry off a couple of days and I looked at the painting again. I actually was a little bit wonky, the edge of the vase here. You only see these things when you put it up on a shelf just to have a look at it objectively. So I've actually added some dark green in there, let it dry. While it's drying off, I'm sort of scrubbing in that background colour over that hard edge in the distance. I felt it was coming forward too much. So it's nice to make these decisions. I wanted to bring that vase forward and push that background back. I think that works quite nicely. As you can see, I'm using a round brush and using the violet, the yellow oxide and the white just to sort of blur that background. And I'm using a little bit of that as well in the background around the flowers and a little bit in the vase as well. So there's a lots of colour harmony and continuity of colour. Everything is dried. And I'm just straightening the edge of that top of that vase there. It really bothered me when there's a little bit of a wonky line and that little bit of sparkle just on the left. And I'm just adding a few more lights to the pink lilac, especially um, just to really sort of bring it forward, bring it to life. Sometimes just leaving your painting for a while, walking away, then having a look objectively can really make a difference. I'm just finishing off here with some light pinks. I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial and all of the sort of tips and techniques, how to create this, building up that painting from quite an abstract sort of background you know, just simplifying the composition, you know, dividing it into four, painting the highlights, trying to create that look of glass as well. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comments section below. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And don't forget to subscribe to my acrylic painting channel for updates of my latest tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.